Sandy Tuxvig, welcoming you to Watch the Dickens, the arts panel show that proves culture isn't just something we pretended to care about to win an Olympic bid. Although, obviously, that helped. Uh, let's first of all welcome our captains, comedian turned actor Chris Addison and comedian turned lightning conductor Sue Perkins. <laughs> Chris's guest this week is an acclaimed author who stood in the 2001 election in a safe Tory seat as a Labour candidate with no chance of winning, or as, uh, as they're now called, a Labour candidate. <laughs> <laughs> it's John O'Farrell. <laughs> and Sue's guest is a comedian who strangely has appeared on Radio 4 singing songs in the style of both the devil and Morrissey. And I, I think we know who had the best tunes. Uh, would you please welcome Robin Ince. Our first round is three steps to heaven. One photo at a time is shown to each side to a maximum of three. These are progressively easier clues to incidents and characters from a famous film, book or play. Three whole points will be awarded if teams can guess the answer from the difficult first image, reducing to just one point for the third, which, let's face it, is a virtual giveaway. So, Chris and John, you go first. And, gentlemen, here is your opening picture. Is this the, uh, the moments just before Podsy Bear lost that eye? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, obviously we can, see, we can see the late Dennis Thatcher, accompanied, yep. um, accompanied there by one of the finest political minds of the 20th century. Gummer. Uh, uh, yes. Selwyn Gummer in the yep. back there. Plus we've got Margaret, of course. Um, <laughs> I think maybe we need another uh, one. You think we need another one. So no, we've got Mr do. Thatcher there. Uh, let's go on to the second picture clue. Anybody know who this is? Is it Confucius? So Genghis Khan. It's no, oh, it's, it's Kubi it? Khan, uh, the 13th century uh, Mongolian emperor and, of course, brother of Chaka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you're talking. Yeah. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Chaka Khan. Yeah. Chaka, yeah. Chaka, Chaka Khan. <laughs> see, see, even that would have been funny if I'd said it right, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Xanadu de Kublai Khan, a stately dome decree. A bit of Coleridge there, we had. Yes. Yeah. Xanadu is right, and Mr. Thatcher is right. You've got to put the two things together. So you're, you're, you're Thatcher, looking, you're Thatcher, looking for Coleridge, something. Coleridge. No. Okay. Let's try the last one, uh, and this is the final Rose. one. I think this might just give it away. Rosebud. Oh, it's Rosebud. Citizen Kane. It is oh, Citizen Kane. Rosebud. Absolutely right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's Thatcher? Uh, well, look, Mr. Mr. Thatcher was the name of Charles Foster Kane's guardian as a child. He, get, ah. he grows up in the film with Mr. Thatcher, okay. and Xanadu is, is the vast mansion, mansion in which uh, Kane croaks his last. And, uh, and Rosebud, of course, was Kane's uh, dying, dying word. This is a lot cleverer than I was told it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was expecting monosyllables, a bit of cake and a go home. Uh, so you got that on the last picture, so uh, one point uh, to uh, Chris and John. William Randolph Hearst, who was said to be the basis for Charles Foster Kane in the film, is alleged to have been so outraged that he offered $800,000 to destroy all prints and negatives. And I just wondering, perhaps we could all chip in and get shot of Guy Ritchie's rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> right, over to Sue and Robin. Here is your first photographic clue. Who is, the, is, is critical? Yeah, I, I would critical. guess, because yes. I think this is a kind of... Uh, that it's Powell and Pressburgers, a Canterbury tale. But at the same time as saying that, I know it's entirely wrong, but also proves that I know about early British film. Well done. <laughs> uh, no, glue is the critical thing. Uh, do you think you need a second photograph? Probably think, do, yeah. really, because, yeah. yeah uh... OK, Rover here. Oh. They've glued his leg on! Oh. <laughs> Rover here has injured his front legs. Uh, poor little fella. I imagine this, uh, this picture was shot, well, just before he was. Um, <laughs> oh, there'll be letters. Glue. Um, so we've got so glue we've got, and disabled canine. Well, yes, what is it? it's, got, it's got bad... Is it a William got, Burroughs It's novel? got bad legs, it's got bad legs. Does that help um, you at all? Misery. Uh, oh. So, OK, let's try... Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's try, let's try the, uh, the final photograph here. Now, I can tell you that the drink on the right is Napoleon Brandy, and you need to be a certain age to know the drink on the left, which I recognised immediately. Is it Hardy Wallbanger? Uh, no, it's a snowball. snowball. <laughs> it was the drink oh, of the... Oh, we've got it. Well, it was oh, the drink. Oh, well, well they know it, 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 so you're well, going to run out of time. So we've got Snowball and... Oh, Snowy and Glue. Napoleon. Napoleon. Snowball is the drink, and Napoleon is the other Snowball drink. And Napoleon and, and dogs. Blue and They've two got it. Legs. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> those people, all of those people have got it. Got it. Mouth it. Mouth. I know. I mean, oh, an Animal Farm. It's animal oh. Farm. Hang on. Sorry. I'm wait, wait. so sorry. I'm, do you know what? 
I was reading it three days ago. All the clues were there, and I had no, no memory. Why were you reading Animal Farm three days ago? He's 11. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So I just go through the pictures. The glue represents the sad demise of the cart horse boxer. Uh, and then we've got four legs good, two legs oh. bad. Oh. Which yes. was the slogan adopted by the creatures at so the that, start of Animal Farm. So and that dog has got sorry, that legs. dog has got four legs out of the picture that are good. <laughs> <laughs> and Napoleon and Snowball were of course the two pigs at the centre of the story who Orwell later admitted were allusions to Joseph Stalin and Leon Trotsky. So you do manage to get a point. So one point to Robin and Sue there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, Orwell's real name? Uh, yes, Blair. Eric Blair. He thought it wouldn't Blair. He was a man who saw the future in 1984 and he predicted that the word Blair wouldn't have particularly socialist connotations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Animal Farm, the leaders only put up seven commandments, partly due to a bit of overlap between thou shalt not commit adultery and thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can tell you, at the end of round one, things are absolutely even with one point each. <laughs> Second round is called Yes, and I'm Mickey Mouse. We introduce members of the public who just so happen to have the same name as a famous character in a book, film, musical, play or song. And the teams have to identify who they are through questions to which the answer is either yes or no. However, teams, you have just 90 seconds to carry out your cross-examination, after which you must give an answer. So Sue and Robin are up first, and let's meet their fictional namesake. <laughs> OK, this is our mystery guest. Uh, our friend here shares his name with a character from literature, and for the audience only, here's who he is. <laughs> oh, little, little titter there. Right, Sue and Robin, your 90 seconds begin now. Uh, are you male? Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's good to check because I've been caught out before. Uh, have you worked as a psychopathic barber? No. It's not Sweeney Todd. No, it's okay, not. right. Um, so, are you a uh, 19th century figure? Yes. Are you a uh, Charles Dickens character? No. Thomas Hardy? Are you Jude the Obscure? <laughs> um, no. Are you, uh, are you British? No. Are you Mark Twain? Did you? No. Uh, did, did oh, are you Tom Sawyer? You are Huckabee Finn. Are you Tom Sawyer? Are you? Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got very excited. Then. Yeah. I, I elevated myself. <laughs> yes, this gentleman's name is Tom Sawyer, whose adventures were, of course, immortalised by Mark Twain, and so you get two points for that. Well done. I think it was Sue there who got it in the mm, end. Boy. your parents thinking um, <laughs> and do you get much stick yeah pretty much yeah. constant <laughs> <laughs> well I think it's fabulous to be on a show where you can say ladies and gentlemen please thank Tom Sawyer fantastic <laughs> Uh, growing up in America's Deep South, Tom Sawyer has an infatuation with a girl called Becky, a romance which is doomed to failure as they're not even related. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, are you ready? Chris and John, let's yes. meet your mystery guest. I can tell you that she shares her name with a character from literature and film. Uh, here is her given name for the audience only. You must have heard I you know what it is. But... Uh, <laughs> right, Chris and John, your minute and a half begins now. Uh, are you alive? Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, John. Are you British? Yes. Are you a lady? Yes. <laughs> Not Jaws. <laughs> are you, uh, okay, uh, are you uh, uh, in quite highbrow literary books? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you an Agatha I, Christie no, can, I, can I say that I'm going to say no? So that no, would be yeah. a... <laughs> okay. That would, that would be a dispute I'm going, between I'm going straight there. to the chase. Are you Bridget Jones? Yeah. Hey! Okay. Magnificent! <laughs> Magnificent! <laughs> <laughs> you gave it away there. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's your view of chiclet sort of you know, it was revealed uh, yeah. oh, no, but it's good to no, have been anything I, I didn't, yeah. I didn't well, away. You're not, not like to be Mrs Shopaholic is you? well this is in fact Bridget Jones how did you feel when the whole hoo-ha started about Bridget Jones and the book came out in the film well it's all right until I had to go to a hospital and everybody was saying Bridget Jones I didn't know she was here was she? <laughs> yeah did you I got in much quicker <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel that Renny Zellweger really captured you? No, 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 really. Have you seen the Have you seen the film? I've seen the film. I've read the book, and I've I've got all the knickers and everything else. So. <laughs> Who's got the knickers? Very knickers. I wasn't aware of that merchandise no. phrase. <laughs> No, they're big knickers, though, eh? They're all kidney warmers, those knickers. Yeah, and they're lovely in the winter. Lovely, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, really oh, lovely yeah. in the winter. It's a yeah. retail opportunity that never came my way. Huh? Like an extra pair, if you want a pair. <laughs> she's, just, she's not in called Bridget Jones at all. She's just on here to hold knickers. Yeah. So it's... Well, can I say it's the finest offer I've ever had. Is it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Bridget Jones. It's three points to both teams at the moment. Well, it's time now to take a short interval so I can stretch my legs. Well, I'm trying to grow a couple of inches. Uh, but in the meantime, can you at home answer this little teaser? Other than Sebastian Fawkes and Julian Barnes, which two authors made cameo appearances in the film Bridget Jones' Diary? We'll give you the answer on our return. <laughs> Before the break, I asked you to name the other two authors who made cameo appearances in the film Bridget Jones's Diary. Any thoughts, Steams? Is it Salman Rushdie and Geoffrey Archer? That's a worrying answer because that is correct. It means you saw the film. Several times. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is uh, Salman Rushdie and Geoffrey Archer. Uh, Salman Rushdie, of course, hated by Muslims everywhere, and Geoffrey Archer, well, pretty much hoovering up the rest of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> This next round is called Love It or Loathe It, and it centres on our guests. Each of them has chosen something, now it could be a book or a play or even a work of art, which they either love or they loathe. And then the other side have to guess whether they genuinely love it or they loathe it, OK? So, John, you're going to be up first. What is your chosen work? My work, Bob, is... <laughs> <laughs> I've chosen Brief Encounter. OK, wonderful film. Uh, and uh, are you going to start by loving it or loathing it? I'll start by loathing it, I think. OK, you have to sell this loathing to Sue and Robin. What is it you're terribly, 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 terribly <laughs> about this film? <laughs> well, you sort of put your finger on what I loathe about bloody brief, bloody encounters. A load of old people uh, uh, whinging about uh, being in love. Why don't they just go and have sex? The train station's there. Easily there's a little, there's a little hut at the end. You know, they wouldn't have been the first in there. <laughs> 1945, you know, Hiroshima, the Holocaust. Oh, no, the problem is I've got a bit of grit in my eye and now I'm in love with Alec. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they should make a sequel, uh, 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 and, you know, later on, because they stay together for their children, of course, they should make a sequel where they're both put in separate old people's homes and their children never come and see them and they wish they'd done it. Well, I think, yes, I think yes. we've got time, actually, to make our decision now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I think. But the, the, what gets me is you go, why don't they just? Isn't that actually what all literature and film is about? The fact that people don't just. Why doesn't the Hamlet check who's behind the curtain? <laughs> no, I won't. Oh, bloody it was Polonius, I should have checked. That was in the first round. Why doesn't Othello ask if going, by the way, did you give that hanky and shag that bloke? No, I didn't actually. Why didn't they just? What a nonsense. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, all right. I, I think we have to, to swip, switch you over here now and see, uh, and see why you love it. Okay. I love Brief Encounter. Uh, I don't uh, believe a word no, of it. I completely <laughs> love it. Uh, these people are utterly trapped. Though they have everything, uh, uh, Alec and Laura, they seem wealthy and they're comfortable and they're with, with servants and healthy children, but they're, they're, their social conventions trap them and they can unable to be uh, properly in love. Uh, and, the, and express themselves because of the society in which they've in which they've grown up. Uh, and what's so great is looking at it now, all these years later, mm. they're they're 